needs to be an increase to the food allowances that people are receiving because right now families are not making it to the end of the month with the amount of money they, they do receive. I've heard ridiculous numbers of $16 a month for like single parents to be able to feed themselves and their child. It's unacceptable. And so we're here to say feed the people, not the Pentagon. This is closely tied to the war budget in this country. There is no deficit. We're not buying into that language. There's enough food and there's enough money produced by the labor of workers to feed every person, every worker in this country and around the world. So we're here to say again, food is a right, feed the people, not the Pentagon. Yeah. <laughs> we call it our lollipop. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, this is the first demonstration in the United States protesting the cuts to food stamps. Not the last. In, not the last. Definitely not. But the this last. is incredible. In April, Congress, House of Representatives already passed legislation and have you heard a word about this no in the tv no in the radio no in the newspaper no because they're afraid they're afraid of us knowing what they're doing to us we have time to fight against this cut we know that we are not represented in Congress. We need a people's movement. We need to get mad and we need to get militant. We need a food campaign, a food committee, food is a right committee, in every organization, in every union, on every block, in every church, working together in every organization, putting our heads together. There are 1.7 million people in New York City receiving food stamps. 66% of the people in the Bronx get food stamps. But when you add in people who need, who use food banks and food pantries, either because the food stamps run out or they can't get food stamps, it comes to three million people in New York City. And so what is our job? Organize our city. Organize our the people. City. Because the people need to represent themselves. So I want to thank everybody. We, this is our first action. Many of you, when we called, said to us, what do you mean they're cutting food stamps? We haven't heard this. So our first job was just to start getting the word out, just to expose it. And so we want everyone here to be part of the organizing, the decision making, the planning, whatever we need to do, because we're gonna defeat them. We're gonna defeat them. Food is a right. Food is a right. Solidarity Center, they took the initiative to start this campaign. They did not wait for their elders to say this is something you should do. They told their elders this is what we need to do. It is heartening to know that the next generation is ready to carry the torch when we can no longer carry it. I applaud my young sisters. Woo! I'm sorry, but I had to write 
I did what I was going to say, so the lollipop's going to be there. Thank you. For those of you who don't know us, Picture the Homeless was found in 1999 by the late Louis Higgins Jr. and Anthony Williams, who were living in the Bellevue Men's Shelter during Giuliani's administration. Their response to his quality of life laws was to form an organization because homeless people have human rights, we do respect, and we should have a voice in what affects us. And yes, I said we because I'm living in the shelter, and September will be two years I've been in the system. Our Housing Not Warehousing campaign is pushing to have our legislation passed. Annual census of vacant buildings and lots, a.k.a. Intro 48, has languished in the city council for six years. As the title states, it would mandate the city to do an annual count of all vacant property in the five boroughs. Christine Quinn stated it would cost millions of dollars to do. We started counting in July, June 11th with volunteers like you and we don't have millions of dollars. This past Thursday, a poor imitation of our bill called Intro 248, can you believe that, uh -huh. was passed. Intro 248 will, when signed by Bloomberg, count the vacant city-owned lots, and vacant city-owned and leased lots. The often the continues because the author of the bill states they want to use this property for urban farming. But I don't believe that because the bill is basically a checklist for, for a real estate broker. Again, something that the rich are doing for themselves to make you think they're doing for you, when in actuality they're blowing smoke as usual. We were told that you need a home, clothing, and food to survive. Our legislation's aim is to provide housing for the homeless, the underemployed, and the elderly. The communities with the highest density of vacant property are the communities with the highest displacement numbers entering the shelter system. Bedford Stop is in my home borough, hometown, which has the highest density of uh, per square mile of vacant property, came in with close to 1,000 properties. Wow potential homes for us to return to. They pay $3,000 to $3,500 a month to keep me waste, to waste, wasted money to keep me in a shelter when that money could, can pay rent. But we're being held hostage by this city administration and the real estate industry. Washington is trying to hold our with the Republican plan they're now trying to pass. The same people losing or who have lost their homes are now threatening with losing their food. How are children supposed to go to school and learn? How are mothers supposed to support their families? How are you supposed to go to work? How are the elderly supposed to live with respect and dignity? Without a home or food, you cannot function, you cannot advance, mm -hmm. you cannot prosper, you cannot live. Homelessness is the new cash cow alongside poverty. The rich always find a way to stay rich at our expense. They have found a new way to profit off the food we won't be able to eat. If you did not know, they are profiting off of wars, the oil, the economic meltdown you do now. They are going to find, they are going to fund their world using our blood as usual. Now they have made it clear, they don't care if we live or die. We have no intention of dying, we are going to fight with everything we have, we will succeed. Look to the rest of the world changing its circumstances. We will too. The 1% on top is about to find out the majority, the minor, they are the minority. And we are going to win. Fight or starve. Thank you.
So next we have a young woman representing the CUNY student movement. So please give it up for Tanaka, who's also a volunteer with Picture the Homeless. Good afternoon. Make no mistake about it, these cuts are an issue that affect everyone. All across the nation, this is a struggle encountered by most. None of, none of what we're going through is listed as a Republican issue or Democratic issue. This is a nonpartisan issue that affects everyone on a fundamental level that is so much bigger than political squabbles that are apparently more important to the, politician, to the politicians in office. As a CUNY college student who is just trying to graduate with a good education and help my mother out with, my, with the bills, my hopes of becoming independent, enough to live comfortably are quickly dwindling because of deals that are implemented by leaderheads who barely use common sense. I mean, hello, unemployment rates are high. The financial economy is in a hiatus. College to weeks, the rent, the rent rates are increased. The MTA increased the fee for traveling once again. The CUNY Board of Trustees yesterday just increased the tuition to $300 so now I need to pay that, you know? And like, you know, anyone who has dealt with some form of higher education can affirm the fact that textbook prices are unreasonable and now there is a $127 billion cut on food stamps and WIC. Something is not right here. Something is not right here. And honestly, there is someone who's not doing their job. Politicians are focusing too much on the needs of banks and corporations and not enough on the people that they're elected to serve and represent. These coming weeks will be the time to gather data, data results and proof. It is up to everyone to find out who, the, who their local representative in their community district is and to take note of what bills and policies they have voted for and to come election time to hold them accountable. The first step is the time. The first step in that direction is to sign the petition that the Food, of, Food is a Right group is campaigning to send to Washington, D.C. and to make sure that this does not happen because millions will starve. Thank you. Thank you.